Welcome to another Tuts Plus Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham, and in this video, I'll show you how to create this carnival textile using only the appearance panel in Illustrator. Once you've created and saved the style, you can apply it to any live text object. So let's get started. So first I have just a regular type object here, and I've chosen the font Novocento Wide because it's kind of a squarish font. Also, I've added some tracking here in the character panel. I want to air out the text a little bit because I'm going to be adding effects, so I need some room for that, and I've set that at about 25. The other thing you want to check before you start this project is the Document Raster Effects setting, and those are found under the Effect menu. You want to set those on High, and your color model could be CMYK or RGB, it doesn't matter. Over here in the Swatches panel, I've added some swatches, a blue that I've used for the background, and I've just locked this rectangle down here this red, and I've chosen this brass color group that I found under the metal swatches here in the swatches panel. Now I still have my text selected, and in the appearance panel you see two lines, one says type and the other says characters. I'm going to double click on characters, and you see that there is a fill here, and I'm going to remove that by dragging it to the trash. Now it looks like I got rid of the type altogether, but if you view it in outline mode, you can see that it's still there. It just doesn't have a fill applied, so you can't see it. So I'm going to select characters again, and then in the bottom of the appearance panel, I'm going to click Add New Fill. And here we have a fill that we can add some effects to. So the first thing I'm going to do is click the little downward arrow here, and change it to that red color that I have in my swatches panel. Now we're going to add a series of strokes, and the first thing I'll do is go up to the stroke here and access my swatches. You'll notice from the tooltip that you can hold down the shift key and get the color sliders, so if I wanted to create a color from scratch, I could do that, or I can just click on it and access the swatches panel, and I'll pick this medium gold. I'm going to zoom in so we can see the strokes better. So there's my gold stroke, and I'm going to increase its weight to about 5 or 7. Now right now that stroke is lying right in the middle of the edges of the letter forms, and I want it to sit outside. So with the stroke still selected, I'm going to click the FX menu at the bottom of the Appearance panel, and choose Path Offset Path. I'll click the Preview button, and you can see that the path is offset from the letters by 10 points. I can use my down arrow key and decrease that amount, so that stroke is sitting just on the edge of the letter form. 3 is too much, and 2 is too little, so I can actually put 2.5 points, and that's just right. And I think I want a different color, I'm going to make this a little darker, again, by clicking on the Swatch drop-down in the Appearance panel. So there I have a nice wide stroke, and I'm going to click Add Stroke again. And what this does is duplicate the stroke that's already there. So using that as a starting point, I can change the color and the point size. I'm going to change that to a half a point, and this time I want to leave it sitting right on the edge of those letter forms. I want to add a second one on the outside of that darker stroke, so I can just duplicate this one by grabbing it and pulling it down to the New icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. So once again I'm going to go down to the FX menu and choose Path, Offset, Path. I'll click the preview so I can see it, and once again I'll use my down arrow keys to move that in a little bit. So 5 points seems to be about right, and I'll click OK. All right, so far we have a red fill, and then we have three gold strokes on the top, and you can see those stacked in the Appearance panel. The five-point stroke that's offset, and then the two half-point strokes that are sitting on either side of that five-point stroke. And you can access all of these effects in the Appearance panel, and turn their visibility on and off by clicking the eyeballs. So now I'm going to add the light bulbs all around, and I'm going to do that with yet another stroke. So I'll go back to the Appearance panel and click New Stroke one more time. There's my new stroke, and I want to change its color to white. And as you can see, it's kind of a duplicate of that one below it, sitting right on top, so I'm going to have to make some changes. The first thing I'm going to do is increase the stroke weight, and I'll put that at about 4 points. Now I want to make it a dotted line, so I'll click the Stroke panel and check Dashed Line. Right now you can see that I have a dash of 1 and a gap of 14, which results in little tiny dashes. And I want these to be dots, so I'm going to change the cap in the stroke panel to round. 
Now these are looking more like dots. In the corners of square letters like this L, those dots are sort of sharp on the corner, so I'm going to remedy that by clicking Round Join in the Stroke panel. And now to get more rounded dots, you can just adjust the stroke weight. So I'll turn that up to 6, and you can also experiment with the gap in the dashed line section of the stroke panel. So depending on your point size, you might have to make some adjustments in this panel here to get sort of round dots that we're going to turn into lights. The last thing you want to do in the stroke panel is align the dashes to the corners. If I don't have that checked, you can see that the dots aren't evenly spaced. So make sure that this little icon is pressed, and that gives us nice even dots. Now I want those dots to sit right in the center of that darker stroke, so I'll go back to the FX menu and back to Offset Path. Once again, I'll check the Preview button, and for some reason I don't know why it defaults to 10 points, but I'll use my down arrow keys to set those dots right in the middle of that darker stroke. So now we have the beginnings of our little lights. Now to make these dots look more like little light bulbs, I'm going to add some effects, so I'll keep that stroke selected and go back to the Effects menu at the bottom of the Appearance panel, and choose Stylize Inner Glow. I've chosen a bright yellow as the color, and you can click the swatch to bring up the color picker if you need to change the color. You can also access the swatches if you prefer to use those, and I'll just stick with this bright yellow. I have the effect going from the center of the object, and the blur set at about three points. So that gives me a little yellow glow that gives the dots more dimension. I'll select this stroke again, and go back to the effects menu, and this time choose Stylize Outer Glow. I want the lights to shine a little bit and give off a glow. So I'll click the Preview button and turn up the blur so we get kind of a shine around each one of those dots. I'll experiment with the opacity until I get the look I want. And now each one of these dots has a little halo around it. There you can see all of my effects in the Appearance panel, and I can turn those on and off and adjust their settings by clicking on their names. I want to add a second outer glow, so I can duplicate the one I already have by dragging it to the new icon at the bottom of the panel. Now this is way too much of a glow, so I'm going to click on its name and turn the opacity down, and I'll have to turn on the preview again to see my changes. And this time I'm going to switch the color back to a bright yellow, just to give it some more warmth on those little halos. So now we have a border of glowing lights around each letter. I'll zoom out so you can see the overall effect. I want to give the inside of the letters some dimension, so I'm going to select the Fill and go back to the Effects menu to Stylize Inner Glow. When I click the Preview button, well that's not exactly the effect I want, so I'll have to change the color. I'm going to click on that swatch again, and just choose a color that's almost black. And this time I want the effect to go from the edge, so I'll click the Edge button and now you can see that each one of those letters gets a little black edge around it. I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply, and I'll turn down the opacity just a bit, and you can experiment with the amount of blur as well, depending on how deep you want this effect to be. I'm going to turn it up by one point, and that looks pretty good. I, that gives me a little bit of a recessed look on those letters, and again, giving more of a sense of dimension. And there's my inner glow effect, and I'm almost done. I want to add more dimension, and I'll do that by adding a drop shadow to the fill. So once again, I have the fill selected. I'll go back to the Effects menu and choose Stylize Drop Shadow. I'll click the Preview button and then change my color by clicking on the swatch, and this time I'm going to bring up the color swatches and choose that same blue that I have for my background. I'll use Multiply as the blending mode. I'll turn up the opacity and change the X and Y offset so we can see that shadow. I want a little more depth, a little more shadow showing, so I'll increase the X and Y offset to about 16 or 20. And I'll turn up the opacity all the way to 100, and leave the blur at 0, and click OK. So there's my drop shadow on these letters. It almost looks like the letters are 3D. Now when I zoom in, I can see a bit of a problem here. The glow is showing up in the dark blue drop shadow. And if this were a real light, that probably wouldn't happen. So I'm going to edit that Outer Glow effect by clicking on its name in the Appearance panel. And all I have to do here is change the Blending Mode from Normal to, say, Overlay. And now it's not showing as much on my Drop Shadow and looks a little more realistic. So that's the effect, and as you can see, it's still 100% Live Type. 
So I can take my Type tool and change the words, and that effect will get applied to any new text I type. So now that you've gone to all the trouble to create this effect, you want to save it. So if I still have this selected and have my Graphic Styles panel open, I can just click the new icon to create it. And now all of those settings are saved in this graphic style. So I'll hide the word cold and type something new, and I'll change the font back to that Novocento wide. And now keeping this type object selected, all I have to do is click on the graphic style, and all of those settings are applied to the new type object. The Appearance panel is one of the most powerful and the most fun features in Illustrator. You can experiment with different colors and effects to create your own graphic styles, all while keeping your text live and editable.